everyone else who's listening. Yeah. Pleasure to have you here at Radio Regent. So glad to be here. Yes, um, I've, been, I've been so excited to get you in the studio because as a young fella, I used to go to Monica's Records and I see the name Demo Kate. Who, who is this gentleman? And, and for years, I've been, you had this mystery. Because seeing your records at, uh, um, at Monica Rec Records, and I said, um, wow, when I met Eddie, I said, we've got to get, we've got to get Demo in the studio here. But um, glad to have you in the cool British stratosphere. I'm so happy to be See here. I, I, I know you. Uh, before we get in the meat of things, what's a, a day outside of music like for you? Hmm. Outside of music? Outside of music. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I, uh, I take life easy now. Okay. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, I sit on the back of the deck and I uh, listen to the birds and, mm -hmm. and I, I and do some music. I study the Bible. Right. Good. And, uh, you know, Very good. Very good. <laughs> and I and I also uh, I try to get my gigs together. I'm still working. And, right on. And uh, mm -hmm. and planning. Okay. That's very good. Um, I gotta ask you. First of all, I've always I've always been curious. Where are you from? I'm from Detroit, Michigan. Really? Mm -hmm. Wow. And um, so you've been back on both sides of the fence. Yes, with, with I'm a double point. agent. Right, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, okay. Tell me something. What was it like uh, back in the days as a black person touring in Canada? Well, touring in Canada, I didn't do too much touring in Canada. I toured the U.S. Okay. I was in a band called the Fabulous Counts, and we, we toured the U.S. We had a few hits out. Okay. And I came to Canada. When I came to Canada, mm -hmm. uh, it was a new music scene up here for me okay um i went i went to the uh zanzibar oh i remember that in young street yeah oh, okay and that's where all the mu musicians were because they had live bands all day long okay they had go-go dancers right. and live bands right so i would go there and i would meet musicians okay and from that point on um i started getting gigs and right um uh, i worked uh, in toronto um, on the jazz scene for a while. Right. Uh, when I first came, I actually worked with Lenny Bro. Oh, um, amazing guitar player. Yeah, <laughs> yes, he was something else. I had just come to, uh, from from Detroit. Okay. And uh, and uh, I met a saxophone player here named Glenn McDonald. Glenn McDonald. Okay. And he he's uh, passed away now several years ago. Right. But he befriended me, mm -hmm. and he was working with Lenny at the time. They right. were good friends, and right. he invited me to come mm -hmm. and I think the, the bass player was uh, Michelle Donardo if any Canadians know that name mm -hmm. and uh, Claude, Claude Ranger played drums okay and, and they invited me and I played with them I had a great time mm -hmm. from that point on I was doing jazz right. uh, in the city okay uh, but <laughs> because I'm kind of an R&B player as right. well right and I'm not straight ahead jazz okay um, I formed my own band Okay. And, uh, and started getting gigs okay. around the city. And then uh, I started recording. Okay. Um, and uh, and just kind of went on from there. <laughs> okay. Let me ask you, where did your love and passion for music come from? And how did that influence you as a musician? Well, I think it would have to be my mother okay going you know she was she's a singer but okay. not a professional singer she sings in church right so she would drag me along and I'd, I'd be in church and I'd listen to the music right. but I always uh, seemed to be able to pick up melodies and I remember strings violins yeah. emotional music yes always made me sometimes I would cry if I heard Mm -hmm. some sad music mm -hmm. and, and, and affected me that way yeah even when I was a kid and I used to make up melodies uh, my mother bought me a saxophone okay uh, she was a, a single mother at, at the time it was just her and I okay uh, she bought me a saxophone and uh, I took it and it took to it like a bird to water and wow I, I mean wow. <laughs> like a, a bird to the air yeah. <laughs> and sure. uh, 
uh, I started playing and it saved me a lot from being, I'm from Detroit. Right. Uh, it's pretty, pretty rough, pretty rough city at mm -hmm. the time. Mm -hmm. Uh, Civil it kept me out, movement. Yeah, it kept me out of trouble mm -hmm. playing music. Okay. And uh, from that point on, um, I started collaborating right. with other musicians. Right. I had learned how to improvise saxophone. Wow. At 15, and uh, that was a feat for me. Wow. Because um, I, I didn't know how to do it, and then, uh, and I, I actually learned how to do it singing. It, and somebody told me if you can sing. Mm -hmm. Anything that you can hum, mm -hmm. you should be able to play. Wow. So I thought, okay, uh -huh. <laughs> that was the first rule that I used. Mm -hmm. So I trained my ear. Right. Uh, right. Basically, I'm a self-taught musician. Okay. And uh, right. I collaborate with musicians. I right. like to do that. That's the way I, I grew up. Right now, I, I collaborate with, mm -hmm. with musicians. Mm -hmm. um, I rarely don't write mm -hmm. on my own. I might okay. create lyrics or melody on my own. Right. <clears throat> because I... Uh, I am limited. I'm not a piano player, right? Huh? But I play saxophone and okay. uh, and sing, so I can, you know, think of it, melodies and and create lyrics. And then I come to someone like Eddie, wow. or, or yeah. I come to a piano player or a guitar player, and and we create music together. And that's the way I grew up, right? Uh, right. Play music that way. When when you were coming up, um, who some of the names that that, that, that influenced you? Or you wanted to play with, or you wanted to be like. Wow, there's so many. Uh, you know, jazz guys. Throw, I mean. throw a couple, of, <laughs> throw a handful of guys out there. Uh, well, you know, of course, uh, Charlie Parker. Mm -hmm. right? Giant, uh, giant. Yeah, he yeah. was a bebop player, and yeah. I, I really liked bebop. Right. Um, but I, but I also liked uh, Eddie Harris, saxophone oh, wow. player. Wow, he was. Um, and uh, you know, you know, and. Uh, from John Coltrane big, to Eddie Harris to big, big Parker to, oh. to, uh, to also Maceo Parker. Parker, yeah, he was you deadly. Know, funky, Ooh. funky. What? And, uh, you know, Hank Crawford. These are uh, Sonny Stitt. My man, Moonlight, <laughs> Moonlight in <the> Vermont. <laughs> yeah, no, these, are, these are saxophone players that I, I really liked. Go ahead. I also liked, because uh, I come from Motown, uh, Detroit. Yes. The music on the air varied. It was jazz stations and it was R&B stations, right. basically. And then you had the pop stations. Right. And so you're getting, yeah. you were getting a good mix. Getting a good mix. <laughs> I'll call you back. Yeah, so tell me, what is, I mean, you have an extensive body of work. And um, I went and dug up the archives with some of your work, it's just incredible. I, I was just mesmerized. I said, I have it on my laptop. We played some of it. You were even, you were even blown away by your own body of work. <laughs> some of it I couldn't some of you, <laughs> And um, it's just, the music is it's just incredible. And I, and I told you, I said, Mr. Demo, Kate, for the people who don't know you, they gonna find out. <laughs> and they're gonna find out the Cool Breeze way on the Cool Breeze Experience show. And you, you knew stuff with the Kate's Foreman project. Um, that, that is just incredible stuff. And people, you need to get some of that work. Where, where can you purchase some of your music? Well, uh, you can CD Baby, yeah. you know, a mm -hmm. Reverb Nation, these right. online okay. things. Because okay. um, I was creating, we were creating CDs and I just found it so hard to, to market myself. And that's right. the truth, to, right. to market and promote right. Right. Uh, being independent. Right. So we create a lot of music, mm -hmm. and then now we put it online. Mm -hmm. I was trying to sell it online, right. trying to promote it online. Okay. But I'm limited. Right. That's the truth. That's <laughs> Well, this is, why, this is where I come in, the cool yeah, come <laughs> to help push some of that music, because... Um, in the radio, I grew up in the in the music business. I have uh, uncles who are DJs, musician, pan men. Grew up in Trinidad, born in Trinidad, and it bothered me when I came here in the seventies. You couldn't hear that music in Canadian networks because you had to tune into WUFO in Buffalo, which was AM, very shady at times in the day. WBLK, of course, but you had to have a strong antenna too and a good tuner, and you couldn't. You, the music you hear, the black music you hear, was more of a tease. They give you the little, the big, big hits, and they didn't give you the depth of the stuff. So that was missing, and that really robbed me the wrong way. 
So I decided when I get into radio, I'm going to go in the vault and bring all of that music and revamp it and just slam it right through the, the atmosphere. That wake people is emotions up again. And um, I said, I'm going to, when I get my show, I was going to bring in large, medium, and small. I'm going to bring in dub poets, singers, you name it. I'll bring them in here and showcase them nicely at Radio Region because that's what we do. We're organic, real. It's, it's a love. I, I, you can feel it already. It's a love in the station. And um, there's other broadcasters on this bandwidth. DVD from 3 to 5. She brings that soul and that funky groove, that jazzy stuff. The cool breeze through it. Every, kitchen, every piece of utensil from the kitchen sink at his audience. And um, I, I'm so honored and thrilled just having you in the studio today. I, I know you have things to do, but uh, we're going to grind out a little bit. Tell me something. What is your definition? Success. What of? <laughs> well, my definition might be different from That's fine. Others. And, we, it, and, my, and, we and it's hear. changed. Right. It's changed over the years. Okay. But, you know, musical success for me uh -huh. is to be able to write, mm -hmm. to produce. Right. You know, to create the music, right, um, and to make it available. Basically, that's it. Okay. If I can make a living doing that, yeah, it'd be great, right? Uh, be because the record industry, the recording in industry, has changed mm -hmm. so much, and if, and I'll, I've always, always been running after it, right? Really, right. <laughs> that's the way it's always been. It's like, Demo, your music uh, is not jazz. It's not really R and B. It, it, kind of a mixture we, we don't know where to put your music and that's the kind of thing that I that I've been going through so basically we write we produce mm -hmm. we put out our music and right now mm -hmm. at this time people can download all of our music free Wow that's right. incredible it's about 40 songs up there now yeah. that, mm -hmm. that they can have free if they well. like it and and if I see where people are downloading it mm -hmm. and and liking it mm -hmm. then we'll create more right and then maybe we'll do live broadcasts, concerts, or something like that. Absolutely. You know, because it's changed. Uh, per diem has changed. Right. Everything. I mean, the whole Everything. <laughs> yeah. I'm wondering, is there a time when you, on your instrument, are alone? And um, tell us about that intimacy. When I'm alone, yeah. You know. Take us there. I'm, I'm an older guy now, so <laughs> my horn has been with me. It's it's a part of me, an ex extension. So right. when I very emotional with with my horn, if I right. if I'm happy, I play. If I'm sad, I play. Okay. Uh, sometimes, uh, you know, what can I say? It's an extension of me, and I feel great every time okay. I pick it up. Okay. Sometimes, sometimes I I uh, it's getting where I'm. I'm lazy. Okay, well, that's the truth. But it's still in the blood. <laughs> it's still in the blood. I don't practice as much as I used to. Right. You know, I have some limitations now. Right. But I do have to practice right. because of those limitations. Okay. Tell me, uh, Mr. Demo, how does a musician monetize the digital beast in a manner where the artist gets paid fairly? That's a question I'm still searching for the answer. I mean, <laughs> I really don't know. I mean, <laughs> um, it's it's hard to say. Uh, that's what we're talking about, monetizing my music uh, or anyone's music. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it, it all has to do with promotion. Right. It takes, it takes a little bit of money to, to promote. Right. Uh, and since the business has changed, uh, there are a lot of people offering you mm -hmm. ways to uh, offering um, independent musicians okay. a lot of ways to promote their music. Right. You know, right. uh, with different ways, and and so uh, you know, trying to find which one is going to be the best. Yes, <laughs> you know, right. So you re actually need a team if you can't do it yourself, so, right? You know, because you have yes. to have someone to do networking, your marketing, net mark the you know, radio play. That's right. This stuff, but, wow. the, the, but it's but it's Facebook, it's mm -hmm. Twitter, yes, it's you know all the social your media websites, uh, blog website, spots, Google it, Plus. Wow. So uh, right now, I guess a musician or a band has to get their own fans. Right. If they get their own fans. Yes. 
You've got something to work with. they feed their fans things that they want mm -hmm. and, uh, and, wow. and build it up that way. Wow, wow. What comes for us as an artist? Creativity or commercialism? Well, it, it, growth comes. <laughs> so, <laughs> I like that. So, That's you know, and because that was with maturity, you know. Yeah, right. So, wow. <laughs> it, it's a period of growth. We learn as we go. Right. You know, and the best way, I mean, we have to have some teachers. Right. We follow right. direction, we try to right. imitate, and we try to go mm -hmm. in a way that's going to be successful we mm -hmm. bump our heads and we start over right, 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 right. <laughs> and you keep growing right on what skills personal attributes are most important in being a successful musician well you have to like any profession you have to be good at it right the only way to be yeah. good at it is, is to practice and have that talent yeah mm -hmm. practice and work on your talent mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and continually to do it right. uh, I mean, when you're younger, you have a lot to prove. So, right. you know, mm -hmm. as you, as I get older, right. I feel I don't have much to prove. Anymore. Right, you you did it. You already. <laughs> it's no, it's okay. just you know, you, I'm still progressing, right. and I'd still like to progress. Right, but I I don't do it mm -hmm. at, with the same vigor that I used to do it before. <laughs> what advice would you give young, inspiring musicians coming on the scene today? Well, musically. I would, I would ask them where do they want to go, and when they can have a definite goal, yeah. then I tell them to pursue it. Yeah. And the only way they could do it is to work. It takes effort, right? So they have to practice, right? They have to learn, mm -hmm. uh, listen. Mm -hmm. and everybody needs to listen. You know, right. everybody has something to say, yeah. right? But every, everybody needs to listen. So, right, you know, right. And uh, uh, before, before I forget, I have to point this out. This is critical. A lot of people don't know, and I heard this from a musician that came on my show a month ago, that Miss Demo Cates was instrumental in forming that Caribbean jazzy sound. This, this is from a prominent musician now. Mr. Demo Cates is instrumental in forming that Caribbean groove, that jazzy mix in Toronto. Hmm. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. <laughs> All I can say is that uh -huh. uh, at one point, right. I had several Caribbean producers right. who, who wanted saxophone music yeah. with, uh, with some, some Caribbean songs that yeah. people knew, R&B kind of songs, right. or old songs. Right. So there was a... Uh, uh, Alfred Abraham was a producer. Okay. Uh, there was Monica and George. Oh. And there was yes. another gentleman named Horace Elliott. Or, okay. Um, and um, so with with the Caribbean community yeah. uh, and producing, having Caribbean producers, they would market mm -hmm. the music right. throughout the Caribbean. Oh, okay. And like the ones that you were playing, yeah. those are the ones. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So wow. I get, I, you know, I had no idea that it was an influence like that. Yeah, I, 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 own ways. <laughs> I was at one time yeah. uh, a friend of mine, Aubrey Mann. You should have, yes, had, yes, you should have Aubrey. Right, right, He's yeah. a fantastic we'll, we'll uh, singer, get him in. we'll get him in. Uh, musician, uh, leader of a band. Mm -hmm. But he called me, and he was in New York City, and he says, "Man, I'm, your your record is big here in New York, and in the in the." In the <laughs> The Caribbean community, and yeah. he, he, it, it was, I think it was uh, the Stealing Love yeah. at the time. Oh, killer track. But I had, I had no idea. I had no idea. You know, and this, this is uh, coming from heavyweights in the music industry, and I go, I go, I gotta pull that up. I gotta, so this is, um, tell, tell us where you're playing next. Well, okay, we're, uh, my partner, musical partner, Stan Foman, right. uh, from Kate's Foman Project, Okay. we work regularly. Uh, okay. in the Toronto area right. we have uh, a larger band but we also have a duo trio right so we work uh, basically in Italian restaurants right and uh, we do concerts mm -hmm. around so my next gig is actually July 30th and 31st mm -hmm. at the Port Credit Lighthouse right so it'll be an outdoor, outdoor concert uh, oh, okay near the water there all right so, um, any idea, sorry, the dates for that? For that it, it'll be July, July? 30th, 
31 this coming at the end of this month. Because I want, I, I'm going to be there, and I want my fans to be there as well. Um, when it's all said and done, what impact would you like to leave mm. on the music scene? What impact would well, I leave? How would you like to be remembered? <laughs> <laughs> With this great body of work you have. Well, you know, I, it's hard to say, you know, I, I would like to be remembered as as a person who played music. <laughs> Fair enough. And, and there you go, you know. Good answer. Uh, my personal life, uh, not too many people know about, uh -huh. you know, except the family. Right. Uh, I, like, I like to be private. Right. Okay. Uh, Good. I consider myself a spiritual person, mm -hmm. and I'm growing in that way. Right. So a lot of my music now um, uh, is more conscious uh, about personalities right. and changing and right. you know and growing in that sense. Okay. Uh, so I, all I can say is that I'll just be, hope that I'm remembered as a, a hardworking grunt musician, <laughs> well, that, uh, <laughs> like a soldier. You right, know? right, right. <laughs> I like I like that answer because uh, it's honest and uh, it's humble. And you, you, you know you can't you can't get any better than that. Any shout outs you want to give to friends and family out there? Yeah. Well, everyone that uh, that likes my music and has been following me, thank mm -hmm. you so much. Uh, there's too many people to to mention my name. You mm -hmm. mentioned a few of them yes. on your show. Right on. Um, but uh, look out for us. Listen for our music. Download it. It's free right now. So if you can, if you love Smooth, it's home and project. Project. yeah, <laughs> they're, they're, they're wicked. Um, uh, I'd like to say um, thanks for bringing your love to the city and radio region, which manifests in our greatness. And I would love to have you back at the show sometime again. We can really get into some more history and more music and more talk and. Get Mr. Audrey Mann in with you or something. Yeah. I, mean, you know, I would like to bring yeah. uh, Stan in St one time, and bring maybe we can do we can play. We can do uh, you know three or four songs, I'd two or three songs. I'd, <laughs> lo I'd love to do it. We gotta we gonna talk about that right. and uh, set up a, a date, and, and we'll jam in the studio and have a great time. Again, uh, it's been an honor and a pleasure. You Thank made you. you made my day, and you know the cool breeze gonna be jamming your music. S steady so you tell your friends and the bands and the, and the cool breeze is 11 to 2 every saturday morning Alrighty. and if you don't know who mr demo cates is well you gonna find out <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much okay where are we here uh, Thank you.